Hello. Yeah. Okay, please, uh, let's start uh, the uh, session. Uh, so, a very warm welcome to you, especially those who are new to ICTS. Uh, thank you for coming all the way for the special event uh, on a Saturday morning. Uh, uh, so, I'm so happy that uh, many of you are here, so many of you are here. Uh, so, uh, so, how did this all start? Well, 1.3 billion years ago, in a galaxy far, far away, as they say, yeah, somewhere in the southern hemisphere, I think that's what uh, we uh, will be told, uh, a pair of very massive black holes, 29 solar masses, 36 solar masses, so 29 times the mass of the sun. They, they had a dance for many billions of years, but then that mutual dance ended. It, it just ended in a colossal merger and with a huge burst of radiation. And, uh, uh, and what remained was something uh, another black hole with 62 uh, times the mass of the sun. So if you do the arithmetic, that's three times the mass of the sun that went off into this gravitational energy. So just to give, and all this happened in a span of a few milliseconds, as you will see. Uh, and just to give you a contrast, I mean, uh, this thing, our sun, uh, over the course of a, of a few billion years, would have lost a fraction of its mass in uh, radiation, the radiation that we all bask in. Uh, and so so this, this is three times the solar mass happening in a few milliseconds. Uh, so that's, that's, what, uh, uh, that's what happened 1.3 billion years ago. But on September 14th, 2015, at 5.51 AM, I believe, uh, this swan song of this pair, this dance, this showed up in two LIGO detectors uh, on Earth, uh, in a sort of a very barely discernible chirp, uh, as it is called, and which you will hear. Uh, so it, it's just amazing. I just find it all very amazing. And uh, I've been in a state of high excitement ever since I heard about all this. Uh, and uh, I'm sure many of you are, which is why you pulled yourself out of bed today morning uh, to come all the way here. Uh, but I was trying today morning to sort of parse the various components of my excitement. Uh, uh, so, so, the, so this is what I came up with. I think all of us have multiple identities, so we are all uh, we have various overlapping persona, uh, and in a way, this discovery, at least for me, it resonated with four different sort of, so to say, strings within me. Uh, uh, so let me just try to uh, uh, to, uh, to share that with you. Uh, so firstly, just as a human being, I think. Uh, uh, so um, I was reminded of a quotation or of something that I'd read in Feynman lectures long, long ago about how. I mean, Feynman, in his very typical militant way, uh, uh, said about how uh, physicists are no less than poets. I mean, we have such brilliant imagination. We, uh, when we look at stars, in a way, we look at them uh, much deeper than poets or other people, uh, because we not only go beyond their visual brilliance, uh, we can see them as big gaseous giants uh, in, fueled by nuclear, uh, by nuclear reactions, battling against gravity, and so on. It's a big drama that we can discern as physicists. Uh, and uh, uh, so now, after this event, I'm sort of, I was reminded of that because now I think whenever I go out into the night sky and see it uh, amidst even all those big, forget about the stars, about in all those big empty patches of darkness that we see, you can imagine that there are these dances going on of these black holes and which will end in, uh, end in this huge uh, burst of uh, radiation, a giant sort of a cataclysm. So that's, as a human being, how one feels. I mean, just to go under the stars, you can sort of look at it differently. Then as a theoretical physicist, I mean, as a, uh, as a sort of a practicing string theorist who works with gravity, the idea that things like the Kerr black hole, the quasi-normal modes of this black hole, the no-hair theorem, things, uh, such uh, things which would seem like abstruse things, which were squiggles on paper, are now objects of experimental study. And, uh, 
uh, and uh, it's in a way reflected in reality. It's quite, it never ceases to amaze you as a theoretical physicist that, uh, uh, that all these things that you write, people write on paper, uh, are actually out there in the sky. Uh, uh, so this is just another sort of a, uh, another component of the amazement that uh, comes in. Then thirdly, I thought as an Indian scientist, uh, as an Indian scientist, I think, I mean, I feel it's really wonderful that over 30 people, 30 scientists uh, uh, from India are, uh, are on this LIGO paper and they vary from veterans who have been sort of uh, studying this subject, like Bala, whom we will hear from, uh, Sanjeev Durandar, and others who have been um, uh, studying this from a time when the whole subject was viewed with skepticism and sort of uh, uh, not very clear that it would really yield anything. Uh, so it ranges from veterans like them to very young graduate students, like our own Abhiru Ghosh, whom you will hear later uh, in the afternoon, uh, later in the day, and, uh, and young people like them who are sort of now embarking on a very exciting journey. So I think it's very rare that one sees Indian science uh, and Indian scientists contributing in such a fundamental way at the very frontier of discovery. So it, I think as P.G. Wodehouse would say, it warms the cockles of one's heart. Uh, so uh, so that, that's uh, yet another string, if you wish. Uh, and finally and fourthly, uh, as a member of ICTS, as a, uh, as a part of ICTS, I'm particularly elated uh, by the multiple contributions and very significant ones by members of the ICTS LIGO team, uh, and uh, which has been led by Ajit, whom you'll just hear, and guided by Bala, uh, and with all these young people uh, who are sort of who've been uh, working so hard and uh, so uh, so uh, and uh, uh, and come up with this uh, this wonderful thing uh, the wonderful results that we'll hear so in a way at least for all of us at ICTS we have a, a few moments at least basking in reflected glory so uh, so we'll enjoy that while it lasts um, so, any case, I think all the talks that you will hear, I won't take more of your time. I think all these different chords, in a sense, uh, will play out in the talks that you will hear uh, uh, and, uh, the rest of the day. Uh, enjoy. And um, I now will invite Professor Sandeep Trivedi, the director of TIFR, to sort of chair the session and say a few words. Uh,